Hey everyone, Ethan Nader here with Hangar 9 and welcome to the fifth build video of the Hangar 9 Cub Crafters X Cub 60cc. Again, this is all part of the Hangar 9 Back to Balsa series and I really hope that you all are enjoying the videos. And as you can see here, we are scooting right along this build and now it is time to install the engine, the cowling and the throttle servo, along with uh, things that go with the engine like the fuel tank and the ignition. So again, I am going to be using the DLE 55. On top of that, I'm also going to be using a different fuel tank that comes with the X Cub 60cc. The fuel tank that comes with it, there's nothing wrong with it. I just opted to use a clear gas tank um, as you're going to see in the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with installing the engine on the X Cub 60cc. So the standoffs that come with the X Cub 60cc are the exact length as the ones that come with the DLE 55. However, the hardware that is included with the kit is more so for a specific mounting method as opposed to the hardware that comes with the DLE 55. So over here is the DLE 55 hardware and over here is the X Cub 60cc hardware. Now in the middle, these are going to be extra standoffs and extra bolts that I'm going to personally use. These don't don't come with either these are something that I had to supply myself so just keep that in mind depending on what engine you are using but essentially whenever I lined up the standoffs with these bolts the standoffs themselves were too short they fell short of that 190.5 millimeters that I needed so I needed to supply these standoffs however whenever I added these standoffs these bolts were in turn too short so that essentially eliminated the option to install these lock nuts on the back side when that's what they were essentially intended to do was to mount back here. However, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be using a similar method to the hardware that was included with the DLE 55. So with the DLE 55, it wants a screw going through here or a bolt going through here and then a bolt going through the back of the mount itself as opposed to one bolt and a nut. So the bolts that come with the DLE 55 are a little bit too short. As you can see here, whenever I use this standoff, the bolt itself is just going to be too short and I won't be able to thread into the standoff itself. So that's why I have these bolts right here. I believe they are 50 millimeter prop bolts. So again, as long as you have a 50 millimeter bolt, if you are using the DLE 55 RA and using this same method, this will work for you. So in turn, I'm going to have essentially a washer before I insert the bolt here. But as you can see here, whenever I install the standoff, or also I should probably mention that I am going to be using these washers that come with the DLE 55 because these, uh, these standoffs right here, these extra ones, are just still a little bit too short to meet the 190.5 millimeters that I need. So these will cheat them up just a little bit to get the job done. And again, these come with the DLE 55 RA. So I'm essentially going to be putting those on like so, along with the standoff. And then essentially this uh, standoff is going to be threaded into the screw right here. So again, that will provide plenty of threads. And then again, the DLE 55 is going to mount up here. And again, we will have the included bolts for the DLE 55 installed as well. And we're also gonna have some washers on the end of that. I know it sounds like a lot, but just bear with me and follow along with the video and we will have this engine installed in no time. One thing that you will need to do with the DLE 55 RA and one thing that you might need to do with other engines is oval out the holes in order for the engine to line up correctly and mount straight. So using the method that I just explained, I'm going to mount the engine to the motor mount using the included standoffs as well as the extra standoffs that I supplied. Keep in mind that this is a test fit and no Loctite is used at this time. However, once it is time to permanently mount the engine to the motor mount, I'm going to be using blue Loctite.
Repeating that mounting process with the other three standoffs, you can see that the DLE 55RA is mounted up to the motor mount. Again, as you can see here, I had to deviate a little bit on the mounting holes in order for the DLE 55RA to mount up correctly. Again, this is no big issue. Again, if you also want to, you can seal that in with epoxy or you can just leave it as is like I did. Again, it's not too much of a deviation and would not cause an issue in the overall durability or the sturdiness of the engine mount. With the engine test fitted onto its mount, go ahead and verify that there is 190.5 millimeters between the drive washer and the firewall. Once you have verified that the measurement is correct, you can go ahead and remove the engine and now is a good time to install the muffler and also the throttle arm onto the carburetor if needed. Up next, you can install your fuel tank. Once again, I am using a different fuel tank than the one that is supplied with the X-Cub 60cc. I typically like to use a clear gas tank. There is nothing wrong with the one that comes with the X-Cub 60cc, but I had a spare clear gas tank as shown in the video and decided to use that one. As you can see here, I have the fuel tank all mounted up and I have a ton of excess fuel tubing that I'm going to use. I'm probably gonna be snipping it off later, but just wanna make sure that I have plenty whenever I mount this up to the fuselage and I need to run the tubing into the appropriate locations. So with that being said, let's go ahead and mount the engine up to the X-Cub 60cc. Ensuring that the fuel tubing is not pinched during this process, you're going to slide the motor mount into the given slot of the firewall on the X-Cub 60cc, and you're going to secure the motor mount to the firewall using four M5 by 20 socket head cap screws and four M5 washers. Ensure that you supply some Loctite onto the threads of each screw during this installation. Now it's time to install the throttle servo. As you can see, the arm on the DLE 55 is on the pilot's left side of the fuselage. I'm going to opt to use the left mounting spot. Secure the throttle servo in place using the servo screws that come with the servo. Locate the 225 millimeter throttle push rod and thread a ball link end on either side around eight turns. Using an M3 by 10 socket head cap screw, M3 lock nut, and M3 washer, you can attach the throttle push rod to the throttle servo arm. Use the same set of hardware to attach the throttle push rod to the throttle arm. As you can see here, I use some spare rod and a clevis in order to make a push rod for the choke. I also used two zip ties in order to make a guide for the push rod. Cover all four holes for the cowling screws on the fuselage with a piece of painter's tape. Using a pen or marker, mark where the holes are underneath the painter's tape. You can now peel all four pieces of tape back so then you can slide on the cowling. After using the drive washer of the engine to center up the cowling, put on the back plate for the spinner in order to make sure that there is clearance between the cowling and the back plate. Once you are happy with the placement of the cowling, you can go ahead and slide each of the four pieces of tape over the cowling. Using a three millimeter drill bit, you are going to drill four holes into the cowling at the exact locations that you previously marked. Once the holes in the cowling have been drilled for the mounting screws, you can go ahead and remove the cowling. At this point, you can now install the ignition module to a place on the firewall where it fits. At this point, it is a good time to route the fuel overflow line. As you can see here, I routed it through the other throttle servo slot in the fuselage and drilled a hole at the bottom of the fuselage for it to stick out of. You can now install the muffler extensions for the engine and now is a good time to fit up the cowling in order to see what needs to be cut in order for the cowling to fit over the engine and onto the fuselage. As you can see in the picture for the DLE 55RA, I cut two small ovals in order for the muffler extensions to fit through. I also cut out a half moon in the front of the cowling in order for the cylinder head to take on incoming air and ultimately keep it cooler during flight. Once the cowling has been properly trimmed to fit around the muffler, you can now secure the cowling to the fuselage using four M3 by 15 socket head cap screws and four M3 washers. It is strongly recommended to use Loctite on these screws in order to keep them from vibrating loose during flight. With the cowling installed to the X-Cub 60cc, the engine installation is now complete. You can now install your spinner and propeller on the X-Cub 60cc and gear up for the final video of the X-Cub 60cc build, all part of the Hangar 9 Back to Balsa series.